Good morning, church. Pray that all is well at your house today and that you have a joyful day in the Lord. And today we're working out of Psalm 26. And this is David again. It's a prayer for divine scrutiny and redemption. And David here asked the Lord to vindicate him. For I have walked in my integrity and I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. So he's asking the Lord to vindicate him uh, with his enemies. And we see David must be under much persecution. We're not sure is exactly what the event is at, at this time. And in the verse 2, he says something that uh, is kind of scary for most of us. And he examined me, O Lord, and proved me. Try my mind and my heart. And this would be testing, refining, and purifying the heart. And David has asked God to do that. Now, we find that even in, under persecution, opposition does not slow the church down at all. And through persecution, we seem to be closer to and draw closer to God. Uh, and through history shows that the power plays and the threats, the intimidations are all ineffective. In fact, more people start following Jesus, not less. Now, however, in the past, in the Western world, and we're seeing more persecution today, but we rarely face persecution. Satan instead has attacked us with worldliness, selfish pride, and a need for our acceptance and status. And so we have to be aware of that. And then we find in verses 4 through 8, David makes some comments about his innocence here and what he has done. And he says, in these phrases as he start these, and I'm just going to read the phrases, I have not set, nor will I go. I have hated and will not set. And he says, with the wicked. I will wash and I will go about your altar that I may proclaim and tell of all the wondrous works. Lord, I have loved in it the habitation of your house and the place where you, your glory dwells. And boy, that is, that is in the church that we see he talks about. He loves to be in the church. And I think it is boundless grace that we should love going to worship in the house of the Lord and with fellow Christians. And as we see here, uh, verses 9 and 10, is what David does not want God to do. And he says, he said, do not gather my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands is a sinister scheme, and whose right hand is full of bribes. So he's pleading with God that for him not to let him get into those situations. And then in verse 11 and 12, he tells God what he wants him to do, and that is, as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful to me. That is a prayer that we should all have. And my foot stands in even places in the congregation. I will bless the Lord. I hope you enjoy reading God's Word today, and I hope it inspires you. And look at what David has to say in persecution. Now, we know David became wealthy, and David became powerful. And we know there were some downfalls in his life. But at this time, David was fighting for his life and running for his life. And he was drawing upon God's strength. And let this be a lesson to us that God would guide us in every step that we do, no matter what the circumstances are. May God bless you today.